Hey guys, Cody Schwab here, and today in this video I'm going to show you how I make a Pollock style painting and how you can do it as well. And kind of like what I've learned about it um, to, you know, if you if you are really interested in his style, um, I'm going to show you a few techniques that you can use and how I um, have kind of developed my own style in following that and what I use to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you a few pieces that I've made and kind of what I've learned out of it and kind of explain how I, I developed that style. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some things that you can use or some techniques you can use to make your own, um, you know, abstract expressionism, action painting type uh, piece, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, this is the first Pollock style painting that I did, okay? I call this piece Metropolis. It's hard to see because of the darkness out here. Um, but if I go on the sun, then there will be a ton of glare. So anyway, uh, this piece is composed of black, white, uh, this is a rare turquoise, and then this is a, um, a lime, okay? And you can see that there's a lot of, a lot of things going on here. Um, now in a lot of, in a lot of Pollux pieces, if you study them, there's a colored background with mostly black and white on top. Now there's other ones with other colors and stuff like that. So this is... This is one where there's a lot of color, but because this was my first one, I was eager to create it and I didn't really give it time to dry. So as such, the background, you can see the side of the, uh, the painting. The whole painting was white. So I actually just painted right on the, the gessoed canvas. Um, the gesso is white, so obviously there's a white background. And there's a few spots, um, like right here, this one right here. Uh, you can see that that's actually the canvas underneath. So I did, um, I think I did like white and black, and then I did the, the turquoise and the, and the green, and then more white and black. Now I like this piece, but what I learned is that I added the layers too quickly. I didn't let them dry. So what happened was, is there's this interesting marbling effect that you can see right here. So this is from the layers of paint, um, like basically sinking into each other because I didn't let them dry. So um, this on this piece, I kind of learned that if you want the distinct colors, like you want these distinct lines, I had to wait for those layers to dry before I could add more layers. So while I overall I like the piece um, and the colors are really cool, uh, what I learned from this piece was twofold. First off, um, it's good to have a toned background, um, which I'm going to show you on the next one. Um, and two, uh, if you want those separate layers to, to appear, you have to let them dry. Because if you keep applying the layers, then they start to sink together and they melt together and they, they swirl together. Now, it's okay if you're going for that look, but I was not going for the look, so this was kind of a learning piece. Um, and then to create the lines, I simply just uh, dragged a brush across it really lightly and sort of you know, wistfully, I guess. Um, and that's how I created lines. So that's how I created this piece. Let's move on to the next one. This is a piece I call Born of the Earth. Now, you can see on this one that I used a tan background because I was trying to emulate the feel of raw canvas. Now, the color is off, right? That's not the right color of raw canvas. But by having the tan here that's not, that I didn't actually use in the painting, you can see the background. So it, it gives it some depth, right? Because you see all these layers, but you also see the background underneath. Then you can kind of see that I used red, um, black, white, and dark brown. So again, it's hard to see with um, kind of, you know, being in the dark, so to speak. Um, but anyway, uh, here, what I did was I, I did a bunch of straight lines, okay? So I, I literally took the back of a brush, which I'm gonna show you, and I just dragged it, okay? And I just kind of did these motions um, that were full bodied motions so that the lines, most of these lines actually go all the way across from one side to another. They don't stop anywhere. Um, and so that's how I created this piece. Um, so on this piece, I actually did let the layers dry. Um, I believe I started with black and then I did white and then I did brown and then black and white again. Um, and that's how I created this piece. And you can see with this piece, there's more indistinct layers. You can see that this white crosses this white, but then it's also covered by a different color. Um, and if I just kind of zoom in, let it 
kind of focus, I guess maybe not. Um, you can see that there's multi layers. So there's a white under here, but then it's covered by brown and black, and then, um, but there's also a white over it. So <clears throat> overall, I guess there's a helicopter. Uh, overall, the layering of the piece I like, and I actually like this piece a lot, um, especially with the colors. The color is very, it's very earth tone, so it works really well. Uh, like in my room where I have like a black, I have a black blanket and then I have a dark brown bed with black. So, you know, the, the piece I actually made for myself, but it was also another learning piece because to create these, these straight lines or these lines that are, I should say from side to side, um, I literally took the brush and then just kind of uh, brought it all the way across from one side to another. So it was these very fluid motions um, where I didn't stop. You know, I just basically brought it all the way across, okay? And I, ha I actually used a tone background and, and I learned from it that uh, pretty much most of your paintings are gonna have a tone background. This is one of the paintings that I learned that on and I actually liked the way that it came out. So I would suggest it, um, that you use some kind of colored tone background unless you want the, the raw canvas look, but if you're using a gessoed canvas, it's gonna be white. So if you like the look of the raw canvas, there is clear gesso so you can get you know the canvas you can buy your canvas duck cloth cotton linen whatever you're going to use and you can use clear gesso on it prime it like maybe twice just so that it, you know it adheres and it protects it and then you would put on your paint on this piece so this is my third and latest uh full pollock style piece now this one actually i i actually really like a lot um this piece i call uh, monochromatic dream because it's only black white and silver um now this painting already had gray on it but it got swallowed up in black white and gray anyway so you can't even see the background that was initially there i'm sorry if it's windy um so for this piece i actually did more pollock style so with this piece i did a lot more fluid motion with the the brush that i used the back of the brush so i i did kind of the straight lines um that i did on this one but i did also more stuff that i did on that one here and I just simply did it over and over and over again. So this piece I actually did a lot of looping motions, right? So I, I flicked the brush in a circle or I just kind of danced with it. Um, so you'll notice that this piece actually doesn't have a lot of straight lines as opposed to this one, which has mostly straight lines. Um, and then to get any of the splatter, you know, you can flick the brush and it'll create the splatter. Now, I personally don't like having a lot of small drops, but for this piece it actually worked really well. And there was, like I said, there was already, I had already painted over it before I started doing more of the Pollock style. So this piece actually just kind of grew out of a, a separate piece that was already painted on it. Okay, so that's how I achieved that. And this one I actually did wait for the layers to dry before I added more layers. So you'll notice that there, there really isn't a lot of marbling. In fact, it's so distinct that you can see uh, the black over the white here and then the silver over the white as well even though white is the predominant uh, color on top except for the parts where there's gray okay or silver it's it's actually it's more gray than it is silver so this piece um, this piece is called impulse um, this piece is not per se a Pollock style piece but the the way that I did it is okay so I painted the whole thing yellow, so it was a yellow background, and then I used Pollock style motions from white and black. Um, this is actually one of my favorite pieces that I've done, and to create this, I literally just, you know, flicked the brush or dragged it across as if I would on a Pollock style piece, and once I felt like there was enough going on but it wasn't overwhelming, then I stopped. So to create this, I simply did a yellow background, did white, and then did black and then did just a tiny bit of white on top. You can see that there's just a few white streaks on top just to break it up. Um, and so that's how I created that piece, which is not as extensive as maybe one of those, uh, but still has kind of the same, like a similar look and feel. Now, one thing you'll notice is that on a Pollock piece, um, Pollock painted on the canvas on the ground. He didn't paint on a, on a pre-prepped canvas like I do. Um, of course, I didn't learn this until after I started painting, but at the same time, 
everybody is different. Everybody kind of creates their own unique field. So the stuff that you do might look like someone else's for a while, but as you do it more and more, you'll find what, what you like to do as opposed to what they do, and you'll develop your own style. So while I am enamored with Pollock and his style, my own style has kind of grown out of that. So it's, it's more of a, a Pollock 2.0, if you will. Um, but anyways, that's just, that's what I like to do. So, you know, obviously this doesn't have as much going on as say a true Pollock, would, but this over here actually has more going on than a true Pollock would. So it's really just, you know, doing painting after painting after painting. And here, I'll just actually, I wasn't going to do this, but I'll just show you, this is a practice piece. Um, this over here is another practice piece. Um, you know, it's got, it's just so I could develop my, um, you know, the brush strokes. So my point is, is that you're, you're going to develop your own method, your own style out of doing, um, you know, you might follow someone else's at the beginning to kind of learn. I think a lot of people do that. That's okay. Just do what do what you like to do, what feels natural, and as you keep doing it, you'll develop more and more. See me, I've tried to emulate six other styles. Like you can see the different pieces that I have up. I've got that one, I've got that, I've got that. There's a ton in the house, right? Um, and I had to learn what I like to do and what I don't like to do. So I like to do like scraper paintings. I like to have, you know, ornate backgrounds with simple writing like this. Um, you know, there's just a few different styles I like to do, but the Pollock to me is, it's my favorite one to do, but it actually sells, it actually doesn't sell the best for me. So it's like, you'll, you'll develop the things that you like to do. I would say pick maybe two or three styles that you like to do and just kind of follow that over and over again. You know, some people don't like to do the same things over and over again. And I totally get that. You know, every piece is going to be different. But if you also look at the people who sell the most art, they will develop one style, follow that style for a while, and then maybe kind of move on to something else. So it's really up to you. I would just say develop a couple of styles that you're comfortable with because as people get more interested in your stuff, they might lean towards one or the other um, until you get to the point where you're basically famous enough that you can paint whatever you want and people will buy it. So I would just say until you get to that point, just kind of develop a few different ones and just keep working on those styles until you're comfortable with them. Like this one, I was super happy with the way that this turned out. You know, this, I love the colors and I love that you can see the different layers and stuff, but I don't like the straight lines. So that bothered me. On this one, I liked the lines and I liked, you know, I liked how thin I got the lines and how much there was going on but I didn't let it dry and they melted together, which is cool for some, but not what I wanted to do. So it, they're all just learning experiences. So now we get to the fun part. Now I'm gonna show you kind of what I use to make a Pollock style painting. There's a lot of different theories out there. There's a lot of different methods. I'm gonna show you what I do to emulate that and make my own style of artwork. Okay, here it is. All right, this right here is um, gloss enamel from Dunn Edwards. Apparently, Dunn Edwards is not available anywhere. Uh, I live in Arizona, so the Southwest region has Dunn Edwards because their paint is actually developed for this area. Um, but I suppose you could probably get similar paints at um, Sherwin Williams. I don't use bear paint. I've tried bear, I didn't like it. Okay, that's just my personal opinion. You're welcome to try whatever you want. But let me show you. It literally says, uh, I guess it's too much for it to focus on, right? Um, it says gloss enamel, water-based, um, alkyd or whatever. I don't know what that word is. A-L-K-Y-D, alkyd. But see, the thing is, is Pollock used oil, right? But now they have water-based gloss enamel. So this is gloss enamel that's water-based. It's latex as opposed to oil, okay? I believe in acrylic. I use acrylic for everything, and now I use latex as well. I don't use oil-based paints. That's just my preference. Anyway, this is what I use, okay? Now, to make the actual painting, a lot of times I'll simply just use um, a stick, a rubber spatula, or uh, the back of a brush, okay? And I'm going to show you the actual techniques here. Um, now, okay, so now one thing that you want to look for in the actual painting, right, is the consistency. You can see that there's this, it's got like this stringy consistency. You can water it down a little bit. Sometimes I do. The thing is, is like, it, the more you water it down, 
the, the more it's going to splatter. So if you want more splatter, then water it down and you'll get kind of thinner lines. But at the same time, this, this type of paint, this gloss enamel, already comes pretty thin. So it's thin enough to do uh, what we're looking to do. Okay, so let's talk about some of the techniques you can use. Now, if you want a straight line, I'm actually going to put that in the rocks. I've already painted all my rocks. You can see there's paint over there. There's a lot more. It's dark out today, so that's why there's not a lot of light in the video. So it's kind of hard to see, but whatever. Okay, so let's talk about some of the methods. Um, it's going to be interesting holding one hand and doing the other. So first off, if you want a straight line, you literally just carry it across without stopping. Okay, it's not a fast motion. It's just a single, um, just a single thing like that, right? So you would just you just let it drip off the excess, just let it drip, and then you just bring it straight across. Okay. Now that's how you would create a straight line. If you want kind of like this, where it's kind of like an action part, right? Um, you would take the brush, you would take your stick or whatever and fling it down, okay? You see, when you fling it down, it creates this really, I don't know, it's a really cool effect, right? This really action, You when you look at it, you see the movement in it, right? So that was a downward flick, okay? That's what that creates. Um, if you want a kind of a wave, you would just do a sideways flick, okay? Now that'll create this big glob, kind of uh, wherever wherever the force hits, that's where it's gonna go, okay? You can see it splattered. You can see that it made this big glob, but it, it pushed outwards, right? And the more that you fling it, like if I swing it faster, you'll see that it created the kind of the wave this way, right? So that was that. That was just a quick flick of the wrist. So the, the faster you fling it, the more it's gonna disperse, right? This was slower than that. Same motion, but this was faster. So the motion carried it through. This one was just a single flick and it created this big glob. So this is how you kind of create the, the movement if this is what you're trying to create, okay? Now let's talk about some other ones. One thing that Pollock really did was he would just kind of throw it on the canvas, right? He would just basically put it on there. And um, if you want, like, okay, let's say that you want more of the curved lines, kind of like this. Well, you would just literally just write on the canvas, Not a, you wouldn't touch it. Um, and yes, this is styrofoam, um, but it's still good for illustration. Um, you would literally just write with the paint, okay? So if you want to create the the curved lines that Pollock has, you would literally just write with your paintbrush um, or stick or whatever above the actual painting, okay? And you would see, you can see that it's creating these intricate lines that just kind of stack to create the painting, all right? So then you, if you want to give it a little more, I would say, volume, then you would just flick your wrist as you're doing it, okay? Let me see if I can, I'll do that here. Okay, so you see how it created this thicker volume line right here, right? But it has a little bit of action to it. So kind of the key is, is that the slower that you, you move your paintbrush, right? The straighter the lines and the less the splatter. The more that you move your paintbrush, the more action there is, the more movement. So in creating these paintings, um, he used a number of methods and he moved it around a lot. Um, but it's really what you're trying to accomplish. You know, if you want more straight lines, you want stacking. So let's, let's go over this real quick. This was a lot of movement, a lot of quick snaps and a lot of downward snaps. Okay. This one was a lot of writing. This one was... Uh, let me see if I can reset it. There you go. Um, this one was a lot of writing. So this one I just kind of wove the paintbrush over and over and over to create, you know, these these really thin, super thin lines, these really thick curves here. I literally just kept taking the paintbrush or the back of the paintbrush and just doing this over and over and over and over and over, okay? This one was a lot of straight lines. So this one I literally just took the paintbrush, dipped it, 
and then carried it all the way through every time every time you can see that i'm tracing my own movements on how i did it okay that's how i made that one and then this one uh this one was a lot more of kind of that and that but kind of a mixture of both so this one i i wrote but it was a lot of really thin curved lines so i literally just kept doing this you know I, I didn't do a lot of writing i simply just kept moving the paintbrush moving the paintbrush so there was a lot of straighter lines but they weren't straight straight um and that's that's how i made this one so that's basically it i mean that's how i make a pollock style painting um i use a water-based gloss enamel you'll notice that i am wearing gloves this stuff is nasty okay if you get this on your skin, it'll probably be there for days. Regular acrylic, you can kind of scrub off maybe, you know, in one sitting within a day or so. This gloss enamel is nasty stuff. It will eat through your gloves, okay? Like, one pair of gloves may last one painting, if that, but probably not even that. Um, so, just as a, as a note, it will eat through your gloves. But that's basically how you create the painting. And then you just do that over and over and over with your different colors. Um... Pollock used a lot of black and white. You can use whatever colors you want, obviously. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then as far as the different instruments, you know, he just used different things like sticks or, um, you know, the painting sticks or actual sticks or whatever it is that you want to use. But the most simple way to do it for me is just the back of a paintbrush. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you, well, that's how I make a, a Jackson Pollock style painting. Um, and I know if you want to do it, you at least know how I do it. Um, there's probably other ways, but this is how I do it. And this is what I'm proud of. Um, most of the pieces that you've seen in this video are for sale. You can check them out by going to my site, CodySchwabi.com, or checking out any of the links that are in this video. If you found this video useful and you really liked it and, and found it informative or you know it really helped you please leave a, a like a comment or share this video with somebody else check out my other ones i've got some more coming and i've got some more posted and uh, i'll catch you guys around thanks a lot for your time and i'll see you later